All right, so we've talked some about transformations, and today we're going to focus on rigid transformations and what properties they have. So we're going to take a look at this function where, where um, f of x, y maps onto x plus 3, y plus 4. So basically we're adding 3 to all the x's and we're adding 4 to all of the y's. So that's going to take this point A and move it to the right 3 and up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So here is A prime because um, f of x, y is being mapped onto x plus 3, y plus 4. And if you want to look at the table, you can do that. So point A was originally at negative 4, 1. And so A prime is now at negative 1 because if you plug in negative 4 here, you get negative 1. And if you plug in um, the 1 here, you get 5. Okay, so there's your A prime. Then we're going to take B and move that. So we go over 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there is B prime. And again, B was negative 4, negative 3. And now B prime is negative 1, negative 1. And then finally, we're going to do C. So we go over 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's C prime. And our original C was at negative 1, negative 3. And now C prime is at negative 2, 1. And again, you can plug in your x and y values to get the output. Okay. So then we just connect those with straight lines. And is this a rigid motion? Okay. Yes, it is, because each of these side lengths is still congruent, which means that rigid motion preserves distance. The distance between the points on the figure or on the, um, on the original graph are still the same distance away after that rigid motion. So isometries, which is just another name for rigid motions, isometries preserve distance. And this is what we call a translation. a translation because we shifted to the right and up. All right, now let's take a look at another one. We're just going to use the same triangle again. So we can also look at our table. So again, A was negative 4, 1. B was negative 4, negative 3. And C was negative 1, negative 3. All right, so now our change is going to be that our x value becomes negative and our y value becomes negative. So for a, that's going to make the 4 positive and the 1 negative. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, down 1. So there's a prime. Oh, sorry, that's prime. b prime is going to be 4, 3. So go over 4 and up to 3. And there's your b prime. Again, a is mapped onto A prime, B is mapped onto B prime, and this kind of, that's the mapping that means is mapped onto. All right, and then C prime is going to be 1, 3. So we go over 1 and up to 3, and there's your C prime, and you can connect those. And do we have the same figure just moved somehow? Yes, we do. So that's a rigid motion. And take a look at the angles. Is angle A the same as angle A prime? Is angle B congruent to angle B prime? Is angle C congruent to angle C prime? And yes. So rigid motions preserve angle measures. Okay? Now, and that's, um, and so what kind of a transformation was that? It's not a translation because it's not, it doesn't have that same orientation. It's not sitting the same way, it just moved. It doesn't look like a reflection because the C and the A don't map, the C doesn't map onto A prime. It's a rotation of 180 degrees. Okay? So if you were to, um, if you were to connect these, you would see if you 
if you rotated this point 80, 180 degrees, you would map onto this one. So all of them, if you were to connect them with straight lines, and let's, um, let's show that. If you connect them with straight lines, they go through the origin. So the origin is your um, point of, your center of rotation. Let's get rid of those lines with a lot of lines. Your origin is that center of rotation, and you're rotating 180 degrees. Okay, so again, that was a rotation of 180 degrees with the center of rotation is the origin or the point zero, zero. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, now we're going to map f of x, y onto one minus x, y. All right, so again, let's write down our points. And let's see, A was negative four, one. B was negative four, negative three. And C was negative one, negative three. All right, so let's see what happens now. So one minus negative four gives you five. So A prime is five, one, because the Y doesn't change. Then plug in the negative four again, you get, that should be a B prime. B prime equals 5, negative 3, and then C prime equals 1 minus negative 1, which gives you 2, negative 3. All right, so let's graph those. So we get A becomes 5, 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. So there's A prime. B is 5, negative 3, so 5, down 3, and there's B prime. And C prime is going to be 2, negative 3, so there's C prime, and let's connect those. Now, is it a translation? No, because the orientation's not the same anymore. Is it a rotation, if we were rotating this? No, it's not a rotation, it's a reflection. So now we need to figure out, okay, where is that line of reflection? Okay, and it would, remember, that with reflection, when you connect the point that gets mapped onto the other point, the line of reflection, and I'm not going to do that one because it'll just go over it, uh, but the line of reflection is that perpendicular bisector of these segments, okay? So if you look, if this is at negative one and this is at two, the distance between them is three, okay? So I want to go halfway between three, which is one and a half, so if I go one, one half, then I'm going to have a point right here, and then I can just connect those with a straight line, this. And so your line of um, your reflection or your line of symmetry is right here at x. At x equals 1. I don't like writing them that way. 1 half. Okay. So again, this is a reflection over x equals one half, that line, x equals one half. And remember, this is x equals one half because it's a vertical line, and it goes through all of the points where x is one half, y can be anything. So if you were to graph all of the points where x is one half, and y is whatever you want it to be, it's gonna be a vertical line, okay? And then in the same respect, if you were um, to do a y equals, then it would be a horizontal line because y would go through all of the points um, on that, that I have a different x value but the same y, so it would be a horizontal. Okay, so now what do rigid motions preserve? Okay, the, the third one um, is, little, is a little more um, complex, but it's called betweenness. Okay, so they preserve betweenness. And what that means is, um, if you have, say you had a point here where, let's just say it's right here, and we'll call that D, okay? So if the point D is between B and C, then you can say that the distance from B to D plus the distance from D to C is equal to the distance from, oops, from B to C, okay? Absolute value is the distance. So the distance from BD plus the distance from BC, I mean DC, 
is going to be the distance from B to C. Now, if you had a point here, this is still B, but if C is over here now and D is no longer in between, which is why they call it between us, in between B, C, then this statement would not hold true because if you add the distance from B to Z, D, and the distance from C to D, that's not going to give you the distance from B to C. You would have to use subtraction there. So between this means, basically, if three points are collinear, then they're going to still be in the same order. The, the one in the middle is still going to be in the middle. Okay? It's still going to be between. Okay? So that's what between this means. Now let's take a look at the last one. Now we have f of x, y, being mapped onto 2x, y. All right, so let's take a look at that. Again, our a is negative, let's see, negative 4, negative 1, or 1. Our b was negative 4, negative 3. And our c was negative 1, negative 3. All right, so let's see how that changes. So we're just multiplying the x's by 2. So we get negative, well, let's make that a prime. a prime is negative 8, 1. B prime is negative 8, negative 3. Remember, the y doesn't change. And C prime is negative 2, 3. So let's graph those. So we've got negative 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7, 8. So we're going to be out here somewhere. Oh, forgot to go up my 1. So again, we're out here somewhere, come up. So A prime. And then... Um, B is going to be out to the negative 8 and down to negative 3. So there's your B prime. And then C is negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 2, negative 3. So there's your C prime. And now let's connect those. Now, does this figure look the same at all? No, it's been stretched. Okay, it's like we took this and stretched it out. Okay, so that is a non-rigid transformation. And be careful, it's not a dilation. Because in order for it to be a dilation, the y would have had to have been multiplied by the same coefficient of the x they both would have had to be multiplied by 2. So in this case, it's just a horizontal stretch because you only multiplied the x by something. Okay, it's a horizontal stretch, right? And if you'll notice, your angle measures were not preserved here. Your a prime and your a are not congruent. Those angles are not congruent. And your angle c and angle c prime are not congruent. The B's are still congruent, but the A and the C are not. Um, so this is just a horizontal stretch. It's not a dilation. Okay, so be careful with that. It's not a dilation, okay? And we'll talk more about dilations later. All right, so the last property of rigid motions is that they preserve um, collinearity. And basically what that means is if A and C are on the same line or collinear, then A prime and C prime are going to be on the same line. And this is, that is preserved in this transformation, um, but it is not a rigid motion. And in all rigid motions, that will be preserved. Okay, so be careful with that. Um, so rigid motions preserve collinearity, basically just meaning if two points were on the same line segment in the original figure, they're gonna be on the same line segment in the new figure. All right, so those are the four properties of rigid motions, and um, we'll talk more about um, the non-rigid transformations in a, in a little bit.